Hi all, welcome back to Mac Truck Bookstop. Uh, thank you to all returning viewers, and if you're a new viewer, welcome. Please consider subscribing if you'd like to continue this journey around the world with books. And um, this one today is Glory by No Violet Bulawayo from the country of Zimbabwe. Um, she currently lives in the United States, but she grew up in Zimbabwe. And um, it was really interesting because I did quite a bit. Well, not quite a bit. I, you know, I, I did a little bit of homework on the country before the book. And I kind of wish I didn't. I'll get to that in a second why. Let's start with the basics. Um, it is a political novel, essentially a political satire um, in the style of Animal Farm, where all of the characters are animals and represented as animals. But there's this sort of fluidity to it where, uh, <laughs> honestly... 75% of the time, I completely forgot that the characters were animals and was just imagining humans. Um, I'll talk more about that in a second as well. It's quite long, uh, 400 pages in the hardback edition, which I only have because it was discounted and um, cheaper than a softback. Normally I prefer a softback, but I don't think it was in paperback at the time. Um, it only came out last year, so it's a pretty new book. Uh, Accessibility-wise, it's pretty easy to read, but in not so good of a way, to me. Um, and uh, if you haven't already deduced this just kind of by my introduction, I personally did not care for the book. And it's actually the, the first book in this Reading the World series that I felt more negatively toward than positively. And I'll talk about why. Um, I went into the book very, uh, I guess, excited. You know, I was excited to read it. I wanted a political novel that was funny, that talked about a developing country and their struggles in... Um, you know, creating a nation. I wanted a little bit of kind of um, political decision-making, interactivity told in kind of this uh, overblown way. And, and even when I looked through it, the writing seemed promising to me. It seemed experimental. Uh, it seemed interesting, but it really just didn't all gel for me. There were a few moments of brilliance, um, Basically, the book, uh, I guess that's just the idea of how I felt about it, but but overall, the book is addressing um, the fall of Zimbabwe's longtime leader, Mugabe, although he's not called Mugabe in the book, and Zimbabwe is not called Zimbabwe, it's called Jidara in the book. So it's But it's Zimbabwe, and it's Mugabe. You know, even though they're not called that in the book, that's obviously who they're representing. And um, it's about the fall of this this uh, dictator who was in power for 40 years almost. And um, the kind of whole story of uh, who replaced him and how. And uh, if you do even the most rudimentary uh, um, homework for this book, like look up something about the country... I listened to, I think, maybe two or three podcasts, a, a YouTube video, um, just to get an idea of who this Mugabe was. And um, he he was kind of this, you know, more aggressive na nationalist and Marxist leader, uh, as, as opposed to, like, say, Nelson Mandela, um, and and was a lot worse for his country. Uh, after all, I mean, Zimbabwe really declined from where they were in the beginning of Mugabe's reign, I guess you could call it. So this book is kind of just, to me, was, you know, yeah, I, I get the suffering and I, I could empathize with the suffering and I could um, 
even get into some of the satire, uh, but it just wasn't funny enough or serious enough. You know, it's like it tried to do both. It tried to be funny and serious. There was parts where like, you know, uh, just uh, there's whole chapters that are basically Twitter conversations. And there's kind of like heavy handed humor of um, a, a tweeting baboon from the United States. Remember, this is in 2017, so it's pretty obvious who that's referencing. Um, and whether you agree with it or, or not, it's kind of just, I don't know, just wasn't, just didn't do it for me. It wasn't that funny. Um, and then it, and then that kind of detracted to me from the seriousness, because there's other times where this book tries to get really serious and does get really serious. And there's this section in the middle that, um, I was, I was kind of gripped by that section um uh where it it uh it, it's <laughs> and it's hard to talk about this book because the structure is just all over the place so what i was getting to if you do even the most basic homework of this of this book you can skip like the first 150 pages because it is literally just a satirical cartoon strip type representation of the events that happened. And if you just know what happened, you can skip that whole section. Then it starts talking about a character, Destiny, who's returning to Zimbabwe after many years. And I actually had some hope. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to forget that that 150 pages that assumed I didn't do my homework going into this book, which fair enough, probably a lot of readers don't. I'm just going to pretend that didn't happen and give this book a fresh start and i was getting into it like destiny and her mother and the characters but then it broke away from that it went back to the political satire stuff and it just it just lost me again and it and there's parts of the book that just went on and on and there's like the way i'm talking right now and 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 there were no breaks in sentences you know like shorter sentences and it's just this monotone kind of writing style after a while. It didn't do it for me. Um, I guess on one hand you could say it was trance-like, but to me it came off as just monotone. I just, I could not wait to, to, to finish the book. And to be honest, I really skimmed, sped through like the last hundred pages or so. Um, so anyway, yeah, this, this character Destiny returns to Zimbabwe. Things are getting worse under the new leader. Um, everybody's animals, again, I thought the, the animal, the animal thing was not necessary, it didn't do much for the plot, or even much symbolism, the best symbolism that there almost was in the book was this crocodile, um, and the crocodile represented history in one part, and then it represented, like, the new party being bad, and so even that representation wasn't consistent, even though I tried to get into that. I really, really tried to get into this book over the course of a few days, and uh, it just wasn't, it wasn't working, so I really skimmed quickly through the end of it. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, you know, what's the book about? It's, it's, I, I, I still had a hard time even expressing that, like, first... If I can break it down, the first 150 pages are like satire of how Mugabe fell and who took over. Second part is Destiny returning home to Zimbabwe, hearing some story, some personal stories about Zimbabwe's history, how they gained independence, atrocities that happened, um, genocide that took place, and uh, how the country kind of devolved third part is Zimbabwe or Jidada wakes up and kind of um, realizes how this new government is the same as the old and then rises up to try to create a new country. Um, it just, it was not inspiring. It didn't seem realistic. Any realism that could have 
Ben was held back by the fact that, again, they're animals, but then they're not. The whole animal thing was distracting. I just, okay, I'm, I'm going to stop because I just don't want to go on about, um, I don't want to, I don't want to go on about the negativity. I just frankly did not, this book did not do it for me. And, um, sad, sadly, this is the, you know, um, the, I, I think I kind of dropped the ball on Zimbabwe because I found out that there is another book, um, and who knows, maybe it would have helped me uh, understand or get into this one better, although there's so many things I just didn't connect with in this that it's unlikely, but um, her name is Tsitsi, and then her last name starts with a D, but the book is called Nervous Conditions, and it was written in 1988. And that sounds like it's considered like one of the classic post-colonial novels of um, South A the Southern African region, not the country South Africa, but that region, or, or even just Africa as a whole, if you want to talk about it as a whole. Um, this Nervous Conditions book seems like it's, um, it would have been a much stronger choice. Um, so that's one I'm going to kind of keep in mind to maybe um, give another shot at reading something that, um, you know, will really get me into what's going on in Zimbabwe. And I don't want to make it sound like everything about this book is bad, because there are people that like this book and maybe like that satire or people being represented as animals or like very uh, just kind of like in... Or, or these experimental chapters where the entire thing is a Twitter conversation. It just, most of the experiments and most of just the, the writing and the things this book didn't work for me, but they did work for other people. Um, but, yeah, I, I just, um, I, I think I would have preferred reading the, uh, that other book I mentioned, Nervous Conditions, uh, being a more realist, uh, a little bit more classic post-colonial literature take on Zimbabwe as opposed to this one. But, I mean, I gave it a shot because it looked interesting, it looked experimental, and not all experiments are going to work for everybody, so um, that's just how it goes. Uh, I actually, <laughs> I haven't even thought about um, what the next book is going to be. Um, because, well, I'll, I'll clip it in at the end of the video, but yeah, I, I just, um, kind of wanted to get this review done with because this is just the kind of book that wasn't for me putting it down, moving on. So yeah, that being said, um, I don't know if anyone's still watching, but I kind of just mentioned to, for my, my own notes um, I wanted to mention that at this point in the Reading the World series, I've also started breaking up my reading of these books with some reading of classic literature. So I'm uh, getting into like uh, Moby Dick, Don Quixote. I actually have already read Moby Dick, but going back to it a bit. Um, uh, and some other novels that I'm just kind of sprinkling in. Um, but like classic, I'm, I'm looking at some classic literature and starting to work that into my reading so that um, uh, I have both kind of light reading when some of these books maybe wear on me a bit. Um, and then I also have just kind of really just essential reading. So that's something that I started doing at this point. And again, if I'm looking at these videos more like diary entries, which I am, um, then that's something... I just wanted to be aware of that I started it right now. Um, yeah, so um, I guess if, you know, it's it's been surprising how really I've, I've talked, for the most part, really positively about all the books. I have put a lot of work into trying to choose books that I know I'm going to like. Um, and I felt really good about this one, but, you know, it's just going to happen. Maybe there's some I'm not going to like. 
and um, and that's going to happen. But I I do still feel good about where the project is going, and um, some of it too, as I go on, as there are more books I like, I'm probably going to start getting an idea of what um, what my favorite types of novels are, and then maybe start attuning to that. Actually, I have an Excel sheet now with all the countries that I could possibly find um, at a bookstore or on Amazon in the United States. Uh, a, a big Excel sheet filled out with which books I plan to read for every country. So I do actually have like 160 some countries with a book selected. Uh, and when I look at them, there are quite a few countries that do not have any book that seems interesting to me. And I've started using Amazon to kind of look, um, you can look inside a lot of the books. And when I get that chance, I make sure to, to read a little bit and get a sense of like, okay, is this a writing style that to me seems like, like a high level of literature? I am starting to get pickier because I've read really good books and I've read classics and I don't want to be a snob about literature by any means, but life is short and um, spending the time with a book, it's time and you think you need to think about these things. And I want books that I want to go back to and I want to find authors that I want to delve into and I want to find countries and literature traditions that I want to delve into later. So that's a big motivating factor behind uh, how I'm choosing the books and I'm being very selective. And I'm thinking it's possible that at some point I may cut the project off as far as reading all of the countries if there are no countries left that I feel have a book in a language I can read that um, that that opens literature doors to me and um again only i can be the judge of that i guess but uh yeah it's it's kind of just how i'm approaching the project and um thinking about how i want to spend the time in my life and what i want to read so i am pretty certain i am certain that i will get at least a hundred countries that i can say um, and there are at least a hundred countries with a book I'd like to read, which is, you know, well over half of them. So, and probably more. So yeah, that's, uh, that's all I have to say today. Um, thanks again for watching and, um, we'll hope that the next one is, uh, a little bit more of a positive video. I want to stay positive. So, uh, I will now upload um, what the next book's going to be. All right, so the next book is going to be The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida by Shehan Karuna Tilaka. He's Sri Lankan, uh, winner of the Booker Prize for 2022, so our most recent Booker Prize winner, and also the second book in a row um, that was published last year. So uh, it looks really interesting, a bit surreal, and uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see you next video.